Okay, welcome back everyone. Let's take a look at the EKG paper and see all of the standards that we need to know. We'll talk about all the important information that lies on this piece of paper and we'll talk about simple things such as the paper speed and the calibration uh, of the machine itself to the paper. We need to make sure that we're always using the right calibration and the right set of rules for interpretation based on that calibration. Alright, so let's take a look first at the graph paper. As you'll see, the graph paper is comprised of some very dark pink grid lines and some lighter pink grid lines in between. So let's take a look at some of the dark pink grid lines attributes here. So that's one big box that's created here, this square. And you'll see that this square measures exactly five millimeters by five millimeters. So it's five millimeters tall and it's five millimeters wide. And this box represents to us a specific time interval in terms of a distance across the x-axis. This is the x-axis and it refers to time. And it also represents an amplitude. And the amplitude is actually a representation of electricity. In fact, the millivolt unit is used to describe amplitude. And each big box represents 0.5 millivolts of amplitude. So anytime we have a deflection, whether it be up or down, that deflection is representative of the amount of energy in terms of millivolts that is being picked up by the electrodes and brought into the monitor. Now, in terms of time, let's take a look a little bit further here. So each big box is five millimeters across by five millimeters tall, and it is comprised of 25 small boxes. And each small box is exactly one millimeter by one millimeter in dimensions. And this small box, again, I'm gonna draw it large up here just so you can see it, but this small box represents an amplitude, once again, and a duration sequence. So each small box, so one millimeter of amplitude, is going to be equal to 0 0.1 millivolts of deflection. And one millimeter of duration, meaning a millimeter from the left to the right of the paper, is going to equal a time interval of 40 milliseconds. So for each and every single movement across the paper from the left to the right, we're looking at time. And in fact, specifically each millimeter of movement, we're looking at 40 milliseconds of time that's taking place. In addition to that, every single time we have a deflection on the paper, in this case, this big wave here deflects all the way up here, we're looking at the number of millimeters that it deflects. In this case, it would be 11 millimeters. And so if we needed to find out how many millivolts that translated to, we would say 11 millimeters is equal to 1.1 millivolt because we know from over here that, I'm sorry, from over here that every single millimeter of deflection up or down is representative of 0 0.1 millivolts of energy. All right, so this entire uh, waveform here represents a 1.1 millivolt deflection, meaning that the electrodes picked up 1.1 millivolts of energy as they, uh, as, they, as they sat on this person's body. All right, so graph paper, a couple things to remember is that uh, the big dark pink grid lines represent a 5 by 5 millimeter square. They also represent a deflection of 0 0.5 millivolts, whether it's up or down movement, and they represent a 200 millisecond time duration. So every single big box represents 200 milliseconds. All right, now we can further break that down and say that each small box represents a 0 0.1 millivolt deflection and a 40 millisecond time duration. All right, so these are really, really critically important things to know about EKG uh, graph paper because everything we're gonna do with EKGs talks about either how long something lasts or how tall or how deep the deflection is. Everything has to do with that. So all the rules we'll be studying essentially for the next couple weeks is going to talk about how long something lasts and how much how much uh, deflection exists in that in that tracing. All right so let's take a look at uh, the next piece of this and the next piece of this is going to be let's take a look at the standard speed of the paper. In other words how fast does this paper spit out underneath the stylus, the printing mechanism in the machine
per unit of time? And the answer is the standard tracing spits out at 25 millimeters per second. So on each and every single trace, no matter what kind of tracing it is, you're going to find at the lower left-hand corner a couple important pieces of information here. And those important pieces of information are going to be the calibration. That's this first piece here, calibration. It's also going to be the next piece is going to be the frequency of the information. So this is called the frequency response. That means what frequency of electrical energy is this EKG reporting on? And then last but not least, this third number here is going to be the paper speed. So each and every single time you pick up a EKG, whether it's a 12 lead EKG like this or a three lead rhythm strip or a single lead rhythm strip, each and every time you need to make sure that the calibration says one, that the frequency response, we'll talk about that in a, in a different piece here, but that it's there because we're going to be able to use that to make diagnosis of certain diseases only in certain frequency ranges and the paper speed must be 25 millimeters per second. So take home message from this slide is paper speed equals 25 millimeters per second every single time. All right now why the emphasis on this? Well because paper speed can also be half speed meaning 12.5 millimeters per second though that is not the normal that is a mechanism of changing the way the EKG looks or prints out on the graph paper to do some different diagnostic tests with. The other thing is that we can also have a 50 millimeter per second speed. Again, this is not the normal paper speed and anytime you have a 50 or a 12 and a half millimeter per second paper speed, you have to change your interpretation rules. So all the rules we'll talk about over the next couple weeks, these are going to be specific to the 25 millimeter per second rule and this is the standard paper speed that you're responsible for for now. We'll talk about other ways to use some of these other things later uh, down the road. All right, so remember that the graph paper tells us about time, it tells us about amplitude. The graph paper also always, I'm sorry, the machine also always represents and reports the calibration, the frequency response, meaning the electrical energy that's allowed to come onto the paper, and the paper speed at which this EKG was recorded. All right, so we need to now look at one additional component with respect to the paper, and that is uh, the calibration. So I want you to take and pay special attention to this, what's called a calibration spike or a calibration uh, rectangle. And this calibration rectangle tells you about paper speed and about standard amplitude. So when we talk about the amplitude of deflection, we're talking about how much something goes up or, or down, we can actually artificially change that with the use of the machine. So in the previous slide, we already said that this 25 millimeter per second reference point was our standard, and it's represented here by a calibration spike that looks something like this. And this calibration spike is exactly five millimeters across. All right. So a calibration spike that's exactly five millimeters across and goes all the way just like this rectangle without a bottom leg to it means that the paper speed is 25 millimeters per second. Sometimes you'll see other calibration spikes that look something like this and those calibration spikes are different than what we're using. So if it's at half paper speed, it'll look like this. If it's at the 50 millimeter per second, it'll be 10 millimeters across. All right, so this is 50 millimeters per second. So you don't really need to know this stuff for now. What you need to know is that the standard calibration spike is this little guy that shows up in front of each and every single lead on each and every single tracing. It's always there. There are no exceptions. It's always printed there. And it's important because the width of this or the duration of this calibration spike speaks to the paper speed. All right, the next piece that you need to know is that the paper speed, uh, I'm sorry, the amplitude is also represented by this calibration spike and this calibration spike should be exactly 10 millimeters tall. So when you look at a calibration spike, it should be exactly 10 millimeters in elevation, just like this. It'll always be 10 millimeters and if it's not, that that means we've changed the gain or the amplitude standard on this EKG, which means we would have to change our interpretation rules. 
So these two things are really important. 25 millimeters per second must, you must have a five millimeter in duration uh, calibration spike. And you must have a calibration spike that's also 10 millimeters tall because that represents a 10 millimeter equal one millivolt amplitude. And if you'll notice from the previous slide, we talked about these three things that show up and guess what? Here they are again. There is the gain. This actually tells us that it's times one, meaning that it's a standard paper speed. I'm sorry, that it's a standard amplitude of 10 millimeters tall equals one millivolt. And it tells us about the frequency response. That's this guy here. This says it's allow allowing electricity that comes in uh, between one and 30 hertz frequency range onto the paper. And then last but not least, this third uh, standard here is the paper speed. So on each and every single tracing, you should be looking at this. Uh, we won't talk much about this for now. When we get to the 12 lead, we'll talk about frequency, but this is an absolute must. Look at the gain and look at the paper speed because that tells us everything we want to know about the, whether or not the EKG that you're looking at is calibrated to the rules that you're getting ready to apply to it. If it's something different, then reobtain the EKG at the standard paper speed and standard calibration so that you don't have any issues or either false positives or false negatives on the EKG. In other words, you're going to call it something that it is or it isn't, even though it's not there. All right, so stay tuned. We're going to talk about the lead systems next.